in case uh, excuse me sorry charles that was just me starting the recording of the um, webinar i forgot to do it right at the start okay no problem okay so we identified several uh, ios type of ios and uh, so um, for the input ios we've got the mesh the domain partition uh, if it's not already known, the restart file if it's really needed, and some input data for the physics. So, and for the output uh, files, uh, there's a mesh again. If uh, we add some uh, periodicity to it, for instance, if we, if we change it to if we generate a larger mesh by um, a few methods I'm going to show you after. And uh, the domain partition can be dumped onto the disk as well. A listing file, which is an ASCII file, and a post-processing file, and checkpoints and props. So among all those uh, files or data, uh, there are somewhere around uh, to avoid uh, loading them or saving them. So for the input file, for instance, uh, the mesh can be created from a, a lot coarser mesh. and um, then each cells or elements are, are split in the same way all over the course mesh to generate a huge one. So that's why we call mesh multiplication. Another way is to uh, load several parts of um, a mesh which have been um, uh, generated independently and to join them during the code, during the, the simulation. And uh, for the domain partition, that can be done on the fly. And so, so that's sorted for this input files. For the output files, um, we can avoid to pre-process the mesh because we can do that during the um, uh, with the solver on the fly. But the main partition is the same. And for the post-processing, it's possible to use co-processing, for instance, using Catalyst. But the key problem here is that uh, we don't have any way around for restart on checkpoint files and where all the flow uh, has to be dumped on the, on the disk. So, so here are the content of the, of the talk. So I'm going to present the main feature of the code. Uh, the tool chain um, of the software and then show quick briefly two applications uh, we've been interested in, and um, just talk a little bit of the architecture of the machine because we are doing going to present some comparison between uh, uh, Archer and Lustre uh, file system and uh, BlueGene and GPFS file system. So I'll quickly uh, going to explain what we uh, mean by uh, mesh multiplication and showing a picture, and then present. Uh, a block-based uh, I.O. strategy uh, that's going to be uh, compared later with the MPI I.O. strategy, which is uh, implemented in the code, and then um, show the um, uh, explain which kind of configuration we use for our uh, uh, testing, and uh, give the scalability of the solver first, because uh, all what we are doing is driven uh, is user. Um, perspective driven I mean that uh, so we uh, we want to test the IOs in a situation where we get also a speed up for the solver and um, finally going to conclude with the results about IOs and uh, showing some previous results we obtained uh, comparing results on Hector and uh, on, uh, on the blue gene here in Dasbury and then uh, results between Archer and, and blue jewel for larger cases before con this is before concluding. So considering the features of the, the code is, uh, as I said before, is a um, computational fluid dynamics code. Uh, is based on a finite volume solver uh, using um, a collocative arrangement of the unknowns. It can handle or support arbitrary and structured bases. And the velocity pressure coupling is uh, solved uh, using a pre predictor corrector approach. We've got about 350,000 lines of codes, uh, mainly C nowadays, about 50%. And um, and the Python uh, is a Python is used to um, uh, to to manage the environment around the code. 
Uh, note that the 37 percent of fortune are going to uh, to decrease because the tendency now is to compute um, to program more and more in C, and uh, all the fortune uh, which is in the code is for the um, physical domain, F physics of the sorry for the physics of the uh, which is tackled. So. MPI is used on uh, distributed memory machines, and uh, there's some OpenMP in some part of the code. But here we are going to to present only MPI results. So concerning the um, physical modeling, uh, because EDF is a company who is really more mainly interested in energy, a lot of the modules are dedicated to energy-related problems like uh, radiative transfer, coal, heavy fuel, and gas combustion and also electric arcs and dual effects. But uh, since the code is in open source in 2007, uh, more and more uh, different modules have been um, added to, uh, to the software. So like uh, the atmospheric modeling on the air leaf, uh, algebraic uh, Lagrangian, Lag Lagrangian rayon method for deformable meshes. And also um, a very interesting rotor starter interaction for pump modeling or, for, or to compute flow around marine turbines. Um, there's been a great input um, uh, concerning, concerning uh, turbulent modeling because the, the hub in England actually is a uh, university of Manchester where they've got a strong uh, turbulence modeling group. So the code is um, pretty flexible. And because it has been tested on most of the trace uh, machines and uh, giving um, usually a, a decent speed up. And so it's also portable for um, uh, Unix on uh, Mac OS uh, operating, operating system. So you can use other the code in, uh, using user subroutines or, or using a graphical interface. So here's the tool chain of the code. So basically, what is on the left hand side basically is that when you you read the meshes, and this is done in um, serial and uh, by the preprocessor, and so that it's fed in the intermediate mesh structures at the bottom of the slides to go to the kernel, which solves all the um, or the equation, including the, the physics, or it's also possible to modify the mesh, for instance, when you use this uh, multi, uh, mesh multiplication approach. So it has to be said that all the parts of the graph, which is on the left hand side, is a uh, serial, and all the rest is uh, on the right hand side is parallel. And the tendency nowadays is to move everything from the serial part to make it part three parallel. Uh, in the results concerning the IOs, uh, we focus more mainly on the writing part of the intermediate mesh structures at the bottom of the of the of the of the slide, basically, and uh, on the writing the the checkpoint files. Um, so here, two 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 application uh, which were selected. So the first one shows the flow around uh, an hydrofoil. This is a uh, 2D modeling, but using uh, moving uh, meshes. So because the, the free surface is also modeled, as you can see, just above uh, uh, the hydrofoil. So this is uh, an academic problem. And um, underneath, there's a, below, there's just uh, uh, an industrial problem, which is uh, investigated together between um, us and EDF Energy. And the idea there is to um, to, to study the flow in uh, uh, on, uh, in the dome of a hot box of uh, an advanced uh, cool gas reactor, um, and to to see to try to understand the flow to uh, in order to control the the temperature in a, in that part of the of the of the dome of the box. Sorry. Uh, the idea behind being to uh, extend the lifetime of uh, power plants. So here are the two architectures. So there is an archer on the left hand side, which is uh, uh, probably uh, uh, better known by all the users or the people attending the talk than by me. And then there's uh, the blue jewel, uh, which is uh, um, uh, the blue gene queue. 
that is uh, here in uh, Adasbury and uh, which is using a GPFS system. So we are going to compare two different uh, machines with two different file systems. And uh, hopefully uh, with um, using uh, both machines almost at their full potential in terms of uh, number of uh, cores we are going to use. So here's the multiplication I've been talking about. So uh, the idea behind uh, using that tool is that most mesh generators are, are serial and then uh, very much memory limited uh, and bended. So the idea there is to, if you look at the drawing behind, is that you can see the type of cells that we uh, that can be handled. So you've got uh, squares, pyramids, uh, prisms, or tetrahedral cells. So all of them being um, handled in an unstructured uh, manner. So all those cells are split uh, in, the, in, uh, in the same way. So for the um, for the hexa, the prism, and the tetra, they are split in, uh, in eight, and for the pyramids, they are split in 12. So doing so, uh, an extremely big mesh uh, can be generated if the process is repeated several times. This is work has been performed during the PRACE project by Alesh Ronowski, and also during a HPC Europa project when he was based in Asbury. Uh, so now going to the black block-based uh, I.O. strategy, it's based on um, global numbering and a redistribution on N blocks uh, uh, of all the data uh, contained in the N cores, basically, or N MPI tasks. So basically, there's a first uh, gathering of all the information from uh, all the the process, the, the cores onto blocks, and then from the blocks, uh, everything is collected by rank zero and, uh, dump, uh, on the disk. So this strategy can also be uh, applied um, for non-parallel non uh, IOs with non-parallel uh, libraries. So the configuration we are going to uh, to look at here is um, is uh, quite simple uh, because it's a cube, but it's been meshed uh, with uh, tetrahedral cells, and uh, mesh multiplication is um, applied to those uh, tetrahedral cells. So, but the original mesh is already um, quite large with 13 million of cells, so that could be used. For instance, uh, this size of mesh could be used for um, uh, RANS uh, modeling, and uh, the next level, about 111 million cells, could be used for large any simulation, so very unsteady uh, simulation. So, and those uh, two levels, level zero and level one, are currently used um, in production uh, either by uh, uh, academia or industry. Uh, the level two correspond to production runs uh, that we expect to run uh, next year. And uh, level three, which uh, um, has got uh, seven billion uh, cells, um, the production run would be performed in uh, 2016, 2017, and that's probably where uh, more multi-scale and multi-physics is going to be used. So um, talking about the distribution uh, onto the different uh, uh, cores, um, the partitioning is uh, performed by the space filling uh, uh, approach uh, using the Hilbert pattern, which is represented here. Uh, it worth noting that um, three of the partitioners uh, can be used, uh, another one based on the geometry, uh, and uh, two others based on a, on a, on a graph, so Parametis and PT Scotch, uh, all of them being parallel. But what I wanted to say before as well uh, is that all the IO tests are going to be performed when the uh, solver performance is still ac acceptable. Basically, we are not pushing the, the test uh, in, uh, to, to look at the IO performance when we know that the solver doesn't give any speed up. And uh, if it's not stated uh, after, uh, we are using the, the default uh, of the machine and of the yeah of the machine. So, for instance, for Lustre, um, we don't use any striping. So, 
considering the scalability uh, scale, uh, I'll start with, with uh, first with the uh, blue gene machines. So you, you can see on the left hand side that, uh, so this is only for the, for the solver. So the IOs uh, come, uh, are going to come later. So you, you can see that from uh, on the left hand side that uh, a good speed up is achieved for different sizes of uh, meshes. And um, we, we did an inside project in, um, in the US. We got a, a access to uh, Mira, which is a blue gene queue of uh, Argon, which got about 0.7 million uh, physical core. Uh, we, we could run um, uh, a few time steps on a 105 uh, billion cell mesh. Uh, there was no IOs there. Because uh, I mean uh, we um, we switched off everything. I mean there was only I/O for the input part, but because we were loading a small mesh, it was not very costly. So we were just interested in the solver time, and then we ran the um, uh, on the 13 billion mesh. Uh, we ran on the full machine uh, using hyper threading, and uh, you you can see on the on the uh, on the second. Um, Table that uh, you you get a, a speed up going from uh, one third of the machine to two third and uh, and to the whole machine. So then we also performed some scalability tests um, uh, just before Hector uh, got shut down, and this is for um, 0.9 million uh, billion uh, uh, cell mesh, and you can see that uh, the speed up. Uh, is uh, quite good on both machines, and there's a factor of um, uh, basically I think 2.5 to um, to above three uh, when uh, running on Archer. So now we're going to the IOs. So we compare the IOs uh, generated by blocks, which are called here say IOs and uh, MPI IO on uh, both machine uh, Hector and uh, Blue Jewel, which is the, the Blue Jewel queue here. So if you look first at the, the two columns concerning the cell IOs, so you can see that the, the time is not very different, basically. It's very scattered on Hector and pretty much constant on uh, Blue Jewel, and it's about uh, 1,200 for both. So there's not much difference uh, running the the uh, I.O. per block uh, agreement on uh, both machines. If you use MPI.I.O. now on uh, Hector, um, there's not, uh, uh, there, there were not uh, um, dramatic uh, improvement uh, using uh, MPI.I.O. compared to serial I.O. on the same machine. But on the other hand, uh, on the GPFS system, uh, it was about uh, 12 to 15 times faster uh, to use MPIIO than CIRIO. And this is was for a mesh which was uh, roughly the same size as um, the meshes uh, presented before with open 8 uh, billion cells. So that, that the results we observed on uh, Hector showing that uh, basically there was not a massive improvement um, uh, using the Lustre system. So now we're moving to Archer. And so what we are going to plot here, we are going to plot either checkpoint files. Uh, Saturn is generating two checkpoint files each time. You want them, actually. Uh, uh, one, uh, the first one containing the main um, uh, component of the flow field, and the, the other one uh, uh, auxiliary ph physics, if needed. So basically, the size would be uh, combined between the Checkpoint one and checkpoint two. If you look at the legends, so you got the the plot on the left hand side. The largest one is for the IOs, and uh, on the right hand side it shows the um, the scalability or the performance of the solver uh, only without uh, IO, at least for the three first levels. So what can be seen is that um, uh, Hector. Uh, Archer, sorry, is a lot faster to uh, to read the the input than um, than uh, uh, Blue Jewel, Blue. and um, so I just wanted to say as well that uh, the solid lines are for Archer and the um, dashed lines are for uh, Blue Jewel. So 
this is the first test, so there is no major difference except that uh, Archer is a lot faster to read and to write. Here you're going to see because we start always from the same uh, mesh, basically we start always from mesh zero, and uh, uh, that's the so you are the red uh, plot is always going to be the same, hopefully on uh, on the on the two next um, uh, slides as well. So if you see here, uh, for instance, for the mesh output, which is going to be the largest uh, uh, file. Uh, amount of data which is going to be dumped on the on the disks. Here it's about uh, 12 gigabytes. Um, you 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 can see that the Archer is still faster than uh, Bujul, but the I/O stand to when you increase the number of calls, the uh, time for I/O is a little bit uh, increased. And if you look only at the at the blue plot, but if you look for the GPFS uh, system with the current settings, uh, there's a speed up going from 8,000 uh, cores to 32,000 cores. Now, if we increase uh, another level, so the red results are similar as, uh, as before because we still start from a uh, mesh mesh zero. The level zero, and here you can see as well that uh, for the checkpoints and for the blue plot, which is a mesh output, uh, for a, a low number, low number of uh, cores on uh, Archer, uh, it's better to um, uh, it's faster. Uh, than the jewel, but when we increase the number of uh, uh, calls or MPI tasks, uh, it becomes slower. Basically, the, the both uh, curves um, uh, crosses, and and there's a still we we don't see any speed up in uh, in using the uh, the Lust file system. So now we are going to the largest uh, uh, to the, the largest mesh. Uh, with the memory we were using on the blue gene, I had to turn, uh, I had to switch off the checkpoints, so, uh, because I mean, the, too much memory we were used because we were dumping on the disk all the, the mesh output files. So there's only results for the mesh output files, and you can see that um, in a, in a, in this case, so it's faster to dump the results on the on the GPFS uh, file system than uh, on the loose one, um, whichever the number of uh, core we were using. Note that in this case we are basically at the at the at the limit of the, what um, basically for the um, uh, the the blue gene we are using uh, four racks out of the six which are available here, and uh, on an archer we use uh, I think about uh, fifty thousand cores. So, which is about two thirds of the machine as well. So we are really, uh, I mean, very close to the uh, to, to the limit of the machines. Um, so I just want uh, to to summarize those are the four same plots that uh, have been presented uh, before, and uh, if you look them in a uh, um, uh, anti-clockwise uh, manner, starting from the top and uh, going to the top left, bottom left. Uh, uh, bottom right and top right, uh, you you can see the the, the evolution of the um, of uh, of the of the performance, showing that basically for small amount of data, basically on the left hand side, uh, Archer, I mean, uh, and Lust are a lot faster than uh, BlueGen, but when you, when you move to a, a larger number of um, of uh, data. Uh, the tendency is uh, is uh, reversed, so inversed. So, uh, but this is done with the current setting, the default setting of both machines. So now we compared the MPIIO and the, the block uh, strategy uh, just with the mesh output. No, with the checkpoint files and the mesh output files. Uh, well, what we found, I mean, this is all done on Archer. 
what we found uh, kind of as, as expected that the, the block strategy is uh, a lot slower in uh, both cases we are using so you got uh, level one and level two of the meshes but uh, it seems that for level two we've got um, a speed up when we use uh, we increase the number of processors uh, whether we don't observe this kind of thing for the blue uh, plot, for instance, we don't observe this kind of thing for um, uh, when uh, when we're using uh, MPIIO. So we tried as well to change the size of the huge page uh, on uh, on Archer, and we cannot conclude much there because, for instance. Um, uh, I, I couldn't run um, the larger simulation because, and uh, so, uh, and and for the the right hand side of the picture on the right hand side, uh, really the, the figures are on top of each other. So either I did something wrong in the settings, or I probably I might not have used the right uh, huge page. But I mean, on this plot, I cannot conclude uh, uh, much really. So finally, we investigated the effect of uh, hyperthreading um, uh, on the on the uh, I/O uh, performance. So if you look at the right hand side and uh, the solver performance, you can see that uh, you it's really worth it to use uh, hyperthreading. Uh, if you look at the we we were in the case of the larger mesh with the seven billion cells. And uh, we went up to 130,000 um, uh, MPI tasks, and which was a lot, a lot, a lot faster than the, the than the what uh, using um, 65,000 and uh, 16 ranks per node. We 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 tested basically with 16 ranks per node and 32 ranks per node. To uh, I mean uh, to, to to check what the solver was doing, and uh, because we were getting a speed up, then we looked at the uh, MPIIO, and you can see that uh, on the right hand side on the on the blue plot that it's not much more expensive to uh, to use a uh, path trading, and so so if you have to dump a lot of uh, data on the disk. For instance, for uh, when you want to post-process uh, results, uh, is is not uh, prohibited to uh, to use hyper trading. So basically, uh, I want to mention as well that I try hyper trading on uh, on Arch, uh, but we didn't give any, we didn't find any speed up yet, uh, just on the solver. So that's why I tested it after that on the um, on the on the blue gene. So to conclude, um, basically uh, with the current uh, machine or file settings, we found for that uh, using MPIIO, uh, Archer and Lustre are better for smaller meshes or give better performance for smaller meshes than a larger one. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, Blue Jewel, Blue Jewel uh, gives a better uh, performance and uh, we should we see some speed up for larger meshes rather than for smaller uh, ones when we compare uh, MPIIO and block IOs um, if the results on Hector and the former version of Lust were comparable uh, much better results are ob obtained with MPIIO on Archer um, as I said before, there's no clear improvement using uh, 8 megabytes uh, for the huge page on the list and uh, using hyper threading uh, and, uh, and uh, blue gene, uh, I mean, the, the IO time is not uh, much affected uh, in this situation. So the future work would be, for instance, on a list system to try to use the striping to try to get a better performance for la larger meshes. In, uh, on the um, blue gene side, uh, there's an activity here to uh, to use the bigger system, which is a blue gene active uh, storage system, and uh, trying to um, to see how the IOs are going to perform uh, when uh, when you use uh, solid state storage technology uh, combined with uh, high performance networks. 
and so this this is going to be a, a, a project between um, STFC and uh, Adela Tree Center and, uh, and IBM, and so this this is a future work. So thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Charles. Um, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to either ask for your microphone, and then you'd have to hit the talk button on the top left, or um, type them into the chat window below, and we'll pick them up and read them out. So I do have a question, Charles, what I could ask. Um, so you, talk, you haven't explored the striping yet, Angusta. Do you expect that to make a big difference or a small difference, or do you have any feeling at all for that? Hmm. Uh, from what I understand about striping, that it would work better when you've got a large amount of data. So I've seen that you get different options. Um, um, so I would. I would definitely test it, really, because what what we found is that um, we don't see much speed up, you know, and uh, and even going from one side of the mesh to uh, to the next one. So really, I, I would definitely test it. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have any feeling for why the MPIIO is so much better on GPFS? Do IBM have some sort of hardware implementation of MPIIO that's getting mapped on? Hmm. Um, I I don't know really. I don't know. I mean the uh, no. I I I don't know. I mean there's. Uh, I just know that uh, using this Romayo um, implementation and the um, uh, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Has anybody else who's in the room had any experience with MPIIO and tried it out on Archer or on the machine? Have got any advice or anything like that for people? Hi, Andrew, this is David here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, yes. Sorry, I had to duck out. As you know, we had a member of staff leaving today. so. I missed the last part of Charles's talk, but I wanted to. So you may have said this, but did, what, what were the effects of turning on striking on Luster? Did you have a chance to um, uh, to investigate that? Actually, no. That was in the perspective. But really, really, we want to try that at some point, really, because uh, we are using a lot of I mean uh, meshes which are getting larger. Beginning Becoming larger and larger, and we we might expect some um, some some speed up compared to what we get now. Because I did a test application of MPIIO for a very simple regular grid problem, and uh, without striping, the MPIIO performance was effectively the same as funneling all the. I/O through a single node because you were just saturating the link to the disk, but with striping it went up by I can't have the, an order, more than an order of magnitude. I mean, it went from I think we got three or four gigabytes from yeah more than a factor of ten it went up and it, it, it um, a huge effect. Um, so striping was really uh, uh, really crucial. How did you pick your striping, David? Uh, I can't remember, but we just played it. I, 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 have a, I can't remember if you specify the number of stripes or the, the stripe size. I can't remember which one you. But I think we just played around, but we're sort of using about 16 or. I think, there's, I think there are maybe about 16 or so I.O. nodes. I think above 16. I, I think, yeah, we used like 16, 32 stripes, and that seemed to be. Reasonably okay for a reasonable number of data sizes, so it is tunable, but 
it it seemed to go up a lot till about eight or sixteen, then flatten off. I I I, I don't have the data. I said it was for a much simpler problem. It was just for a a cube, you know, distributed across a a cubic domain. But it was um, illustrating the fact that the striping gives you access to multiple multiple routes to disk or multiple disks, and and, and you do get a, a big improvement. Yeah, we, I mean, here, I mean, we when you use a small, I mean, uh, a small mesh basically, when you use a small mesh, uh, the time to write and read is really comparable to basically ten times steps was the solver, so it's, it's not an issue. But on the largest meshes, on the um, uh, high number of uh, processor counts, uh, you end up wasting about 20 minutes of your time just writing on the disk. So that's, that's where we would be really interested in testing striping, actually. So uh, this is one of the interesting differences between the, the GPFS setup on BlueGene and Lustre setup on things like the Cray, is that the BlueGene, as I understand it, and this might be due to my incomplete understanding of the architecture, is that as you increase the number of cores, you automatically essentially get more striping because you access to more I.O. draws as you go up across the racks. So essentially you're effectively increasing your um, total bandwidth available as you increase your number of cores, whereas the same is not quite true on Archer because the default stripe size is a certain size and it doesn't change as you increase the number of cores. You have to physically do it with the striping to get that increased bandwidth. Okay. Um, so there's a question here from uh, Matt Street asking, did you experiment using the MPI hints to MPIO? And there's a couple of hints that can make a big difference, collective buffering and data sieving. No, there's something I didn't mention is that um, just to prepare this talk, I burned five million of AUs, you know. So because I mean, we, I mean, we we were using about uh, one third to two thirds of the machine almost each time. So you also limited in the number of tests you can perform. So I, I just identified a few, and probably probably striping would be the next one. So one thing it might work for us doing in collaboration with you, as you've already done a lot of this work, is maybe trying to think to put together some sort of study on Archer and, and maybe explore some of these things, um, given that you've got some base, base, baseline results anyway that we could compare with. Yes, yes, and something we wanted to test as well. I mean, maybe that's no influence, but we wanted to test different compilers as well. So we we didn't get the chance to do that. I think those all those results are um, obtained with the GNU compiler, but the the code can be installed with the Intel on the Cray one as well. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions or anything they want to ask in general about uh, Archer, not just restricted to parallel I/O? <laughs> I just I just found some some data actually which we did and um, uh, the default I/O performance we were getting was something like um, 100 megabytes a second and then uh, that that's from MPI I/O but with the default settings and for very large data sets it went up to two gigabytes we got a we got a factor like I said a very simple case but for say striping of 32 stripes, we, we got up to two gigabytes a second from 100 megabytes. So, so that's no, that purely changing the uh, stripe size. Um, so I think I think unless you do striping, none of the hints or anything like that is going to help because you're just saturating the disk. You're effectively going through one disk and you're saturating that disk. Um, doesn't matter if you get the data there quicker because the in, the inter internode links of the Cray network are so much faster than the I/O to disk. It's, you know, if you do anything vaguely sensible, you saturate the the, um, 
the, the bandwidth to disk. So the only thing you can do is to increase the number of disks by setting the stripe size. I, I was astounded it made such a difference, though, I have to say. Um, I was absolutely astounded. But we see factors of 10 to 20 for a very simple test case. OK, we well, would be very interested in trying that, because I mean, all, all the results uh, shown here basically are mainly because mainly on the, the mesh uh, that we dump on the disk. But is the, for the checkpoint and restart files that we need. Um, we really need to find a solution. And so far, this was just uh, we are just talking about writing on the disk. But after that, there will be reading as well. Those large amount of data. This has not been done here. Okay, thanks, Charles. Thanks, David. Uh, has anybody else got anything they want to ask or any comments? I'm not seeing anything at the moment. So, in that case, if nobody's got anything else to add, uh, I think I'd just like to thank Charles for taking the time uh, to contribute to the technical forum. Uh, the next one will be a month's time. I can't quite remember off the top of my head what the subject will be, but we'll publicise it. Uh, for all the routes we normally do, um, and uh, hope to see some of you there as well. If anybody thinks of any questions um, after this is finished, then please don't hesitate to contact the Archer Help Desk, and we can ensure we get uh, sent to the right people. Thank you, everyone, for coming along. Okay. Thank you.